unboxing the Razer Viper V3 Hyperspeed. If you guys want to check it out, there's Amazon links below, but let's get inside of this box. And then afterwards, let's get inside of this mouse. Like, not, not like that, just to like check it out. You guys know what I mean. All right, opening this up, classic Razer packaging. We've got that brown box in here, paperwork slash manual and then the mouse itself. Very light initially, as we come to expect with modern mice, and a very cool continuation of what the Viper is. This is a definitely modernized approach to what the Viper was. It is completely smooth. It has kind of a matte texture to it. I think visually it looks great. It's really clean, but it has these little flared out edges right there, which I think make it look really quite good. Elegant, very elegant. Nice button there, nice tactile scroll wheel with heavy tactile bumps in between, which I appreciate. Very little travel on the side buttons. That is a really nice feel. That's quite good. The clicks, ooh, these feel great. Wow. These might be actually my favorite implementation of Razer's switches on a mouse, just initially very, very crispy, very tactile, very clicky, and I really quite like that a lot. This mouse is very interesting. It is not at all what I expected. The bottom is very similar to most Razer mouses right now. We've got the PTFE feet, two in the front, one of those curved shapes, which a lot of mice are doing, but we've also got a little compartment as well as an on off switch right there. So let's pop that compartment open. There's a little bit of cardboard down there. So make sure to take that out. And then we've got a place for a battery. So this one's also battery powered. And then your dongle is also in there buried all the way super deep down. Look at that but you push on the top and the, and the top kind of pops out. So it, it's actually a good design. It's pretty easy to get it in and out, but quite interesting, isn't it? To reach your dongle storage, you have to take out your battery, which I don't love. Let's turn this on, see if it's got RGB. Not even a, well, we're testing the durability. <laughs> no scratches there, uh, but after turning it on, there is no visual light, I believe, anywhere on this, which is kind of strange, or maybe it's just out of battery, I'm not sure, um, but initially, the Viper, really, really cool continuation of what the Viper has been. I love the shape. I love the feel in hand. It feels very Viper, but a little bit different. And visually, I think they knocked it out of the park. But with that, let's jump to the full review. This is the Razer Viper V3 coming in at a price tag of only $65.99. And I think Razer is absolutely the king of releasing phenomenal products sometimes, but with a freaking awesome price tag. They've been doing that a lot recently. $66 for this mouse is a steal and it just came out. Okay, this is using Razer's 30K optical sensor. This hits a 1000 Hertz pulling rate or 8000 Hertz if you get their hyper pulling uh, like dongle for it. It is sold separately and it takes an immense amount of battery life from the mouse, but it's, you know, it's there. Up to 30,000 DPI, 750 IPS and 70 Gs of acceleration. The build quality here is understated in terms of design being fully black with a glossy Razer logo and glossy accents around the base but it is very attractive. It's like a Volvo. It's like not shouting in your face, but once you really look at it, it's like, wow, that was, that's, you know, it's elegant. It is elegant. And I think it is the perfect continuation of the Viper. It still holds the exact same DNA. If you're used to a Viper, you're probably going to love this. This is a symmetrical mouse and the build quality has no creaks, no rattles, and it feels solid and is very confidence inspiring in game. So full pass there. Palm gripping this actually feels great as well as a relaxed claw grip and is a bigger mouse with its lengthwise, but the palm bump isn't too tall, so there's enough height for me to rest my fingers comfortably on the sides of the mouse. It's kind of like the Goldilocks for that Viper shape. Obviously, the DNA of each mouse is going to be its shape, but this one, it's just, it's just a dang good mouse, especially on a budget. Like, I can't get over how good this mouse feels like it's in like a very high tier, uh, not 66 bucks, I'm gonna tell you that. For the color options, you get black. That's it, be happy with it. Skates here are 100% PTFE with two small skates on the top, one around the center, one large skate on the bottom, and this glides extremely well, okay? So yeah, does really well. However, if you do end up pressing a little bit harder, it does kind of drag against not the skate, but the body because you're pressing it in 
to the mouse pad that only happens when you're pressing very, very hard. And really in game, I never really noticed it. So not a big deal, it glides very well. For connectivity, this is wireless only with a 2.4 gigahertz USB dongle and no Bluetooth. You are gonna game on this mouse and you're gonna be happy gaming on this mouse exclusively. This is only powered via a battery. So again, no charging capabilities, but again, keep some spares around. Yeah, even with a battery, this feels like a extremely high-end mouse with literally the only compromise being that you have a battery. <laughs> Yeah, it's that good. The switches here are again, Razer's Gen 2 mechanical switches, and they're implemented very well here. There's very minimal travel, very little wobble side to side, and they are really crisp. This is one of the best implementations of these switches from Razer. For programmable buttons, this again has the two standard side buttons on the left, which are uniquely spaced further apart from each other, and there is a button behind the scroll wheel. As for the scroll wheel itself, there are really distinct closer together tactile bumps, which I really enjoy Overall, a very solid scroll wheel. Pretty much everything on this mouse is solid. Now, the weight with the stock AA battery sits at only 83 grams. Now, I want you to understand that 83 grams, while it is a lot for a AA non-lithium battery, is extremely good. Now, really the only con here is that it doesn't natively have a AAA slot. I wish they had implemented that here, but they didn't. So what you can do is get an adapter for a AAA battery, then get a lithium battery, and that's how you're gonna get the lowest weight. And that'll get you 70 grams, maybe slightly under, for that weight and the size of the mouse and the feel, this doesn't feel too heavy. Remember, it's not about always having the lightest mouse possible. It's about having the right balance for a mouse. You can have a large mouse that's incredibly light, that's too light. Overall, an extremely impressive mouse that impressed the living heck out of me. Again, if you wanna check out this exact same product, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. And if you wanna check out my main channel with longer form content, you can check that out right here. But this is a consumer tech review, high speed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.